I often get asked questions about laser lock technology slash solution. And to best explain how this product works for helping a dental implant integrate, we must tell a little bit of a story. So let's go back and think about what it is we're doing when we actually place a dental implant. So we know the purpose of skin is to keep the inside in and the outside out. Everybody knows that. When we place a dental implant into the skin, it perforates the skin. It goes from the bone, out through the gingiva, and into the mouth. Okay? So it should be obvious to just about anyone watching that having a good tight seal around this piece of metal that's sticking through your gums is probably pretty important. So what happened was there were some scientists at Harvard, a reputable school, who were doing some work on how cells move across different types of textured surfaces. And what they found is that if they made these certain grooves in their material, that the cells got trapped. So imagine we go back to the 1940s and we're, we're or, or, or actually the 1919s and or the teens, 19. Imagine we go back to the 19s, like 1914, and we're talking about trench warfare. So what we would have is we'd have trenches dug, and in between the trenches would be a flat field. Inside the trenches, the people could move freely, right, along those troughs. On the open field was the danger zone, right? They couldn't li live on the open field very well, right? They wouldn't have anywhere to hide, right? So what they found was that if they were able to create small little grooves in the material, that the cells around it got trapped in those cells, just like the soldiers were in the troughs in, in the trenches in the, in the First World War. So it's pretty clever because it's a function of the depth and the width and the frequency of these troughs. So they invented laser lock. The technology traps cells. Oh, pretty clever. Well, being that BioHorizons is an, is an engineering-driven company, their entire C-suite is all engineers, they realized early on that having a tight seal around a piece of metal that sticks through the body is probably a good idea. They licensed the technology. And here's how it works. When osteoblasts or fibroblasts encounter these trenches, these little grooves, they get trapped in them. It gives them a place to attach to the, to the implant. The laser lock surface is attached to the coronal part of the implant. Why is that important? Well, that's where it sticks through either the bone, the soft tissue, or a combination of both. What do I mean? The implant can be sometimes subcrestal, crestal, or supracrestal, right? So if that's the case, we need a, a surface modification to the crestal region of our implant near the platform that will work in all three conditions. And what they found is, is that osteoblasts and fibroblasts both attach to these grooves, these laser locked grooves on the coronal portion of the implant, making it very, very clever. Why? Because as I've said before, almost never is there level bone. If you're going into the aesthetic zone with a single implant, there is no level bone. The bone is not level. It, it undulates, right? It goes up and approximately, it goes down on the facial, it goes up on the lingual. It's a, it's a saddle point. So if there's no level bone, you're guaranteed that the platform of your implant is going to be either subcrestal, crestal, or supercrestal. Well, laser lock works in all those conditions. Now, an interesting thing is to take what we're talking about here and to expand it. So if you ask yourself the question, are there other pieces of, of foreign body material that stick through the, through the body? And the answer is yes. In orthopedics, they do it all the time. In orthopedics, what they do is they do fixation, uh, fixation of broken limbs, external fixation, right? And they put screws through the skin and into the bone. They also do prostheses. So coming off the, the leg bone, if you're missing the lower leg, they'll have a piece of titanium sticking through where your knee used to be, and they'll be able to attach 
a lower prosthesis to it. Well, what I did is I contacted my close colleagues in the orthopedic world and I asked them the following question. Do you see any cupping, wound healing, around these metal perforations that go through the body? And they went, of course we do. And I said, really? And they said, yeah. I said, do you have a name for it? Because in, in dentistry, we call it bone loss, right? We go, well, we've got bone loss around our implant, which we talked about before is most likely a misnomer. It most likely is wound healing rather than bone loss. But aside from that, they say, yeah, we see it all the time. We call it aseptic healing, aseptic necrosis. So basically a condition that occurs when a foreign body sticks through the skin. So they're like, yeah, we see it all the time. But to them, it doesn't matter. Why? Well, a couple of hundred microns of wound healing around an implant that has no aesthetic concerns is irrelevant. So on your knee, if you're missing a couple hundred microns of bone around the implant that's sticking out through your leg, it doesn't matter because you're going to put a prosthetic lower limb over. It doesn't matter. In the mouth, where we're used to working with sub-millimeter dimensions, that's where we take a higher concern for the amount of crustal bone loss. Now, coming back to laser lock, what we found through some very, very, very good studies, they did a split study where 300 units were placed with laser lock, 300 units were placed without laser lock. So we have a total of 600 units. The implants are identical. They have everything. The thread pattern is the same. The surface technology is the same. The, the connection is the same. They're all the same. The only variable they changed was the laser lock. And what they were able to find is that the laser lock reduced the wound healing by half. It cut it in half. That's substantial. Now, it didn't eliminate it. And why didn't it eliminate it? Because the body's in control, okay? The body is in control of healing a foreign body that sticks through it. There's nothing you can do about that. The body is running that show, okay? So cut it in half, though, reduces it to something that is rather irrelevant. What do I mean? At 300 microns of crustal wound healing, it is clinically irrelevant. In fact, it's not even predictably measurable. When we go to our ability to measure on a, on a, on a computer through a radiograph, studies have shown that we're anywhere between 400 and 500 microns in error. And you know this to be true if you've ever done an endodontic procedure and you say, well, what's the working length? And you say it's 17.5 or it's 18. You don't say it's 17.65, right? Nobody does that. It's, we're working at half, in half millimeter increments. So when we talk about crust to wound healing, when you get down to a couple hundred microns, it turns out that it's clinically relevant. So at the end of the day, by adding laser lock to the coronal region of your implant, you get better attachment around the implant that theoretically and practically is creating a better outcome for your patient with more or less wound healing that is clinically irrelevant. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Smile Engineer, helping you re-engineer your practice.